Hey there, fellow adult collectors. Welcome back. David Eon here with, as promised, the Kenner 1974 Toy Fair catalog in all of its amazing glory. And these are getting more difficult to find every day because of a desire for nostalgia from the adult collector market for historical value because sometimes this is the only way to really reference things. There are things in these catalogs sometimes that were never produced and also because there are people in the marketplace who destroy these deliberately. They cut the pages out and they sell the pages one at a time instead of selling the entire catalog which is a practice that I personally frown upon. I don't agree with that. I guess if you have a catalog that's just trashed and you can salvage a few pages out of it, that's one thing, but when you deliberately carve up a catalog that's otherwise in excellent condition, that hurts my feelings. So let's go ahead and get into this. I used to have a rather large collection of these catalogs and it's part of the collection that I lost some years ago and it's just a promo page don't worry it's not all baby toys or dollies or you can see the Kenner Scouts right here these can also give you some great ideas if you're into nostalgic collecting like right here the American Dental Association it says novelty toys up there in the upper left hand corner and you see the Snoopy toothbrush and the Mickey Mouse toothbrush and you know, if you wanted to collect something that just absolutely gives you that 70s or 80s feel, you can often find something like this really cheap for sale, even unused condition. I've seen these for sale unused for less than 50 bucks. So while you're out there thinking to yourself, oh, I can't afford to buy vintage because it's just too expensive, you're kind of psyching yourself out because more vintage stuff is cheaper than you would believe. There's the Fred Flintstone one. That's really cool. He's like in his little Flintmobile or whatever his car was called. I don't recall. But that's really cool. <laughs> I would totally get that. And I do like some of these toys that are aimed at the younger audience also. Like, I have a collection of Mattel Chatter Chums as an example. There it is, a Flintstones toothbrush in the original box. Awesome. Snoopy Pencil Sharpener. I bet you could find this really cheap as well. I bet you that would be relatively inexpensive for you to track down the original Snoopy Pencil Sharpener in the box if you were so inclined. SSP Peewees, which is just a ripcord little vehicle here. Yeah, obviously aimed at someone who's much younger. More SSP Peewees on this page. Like the box, if you were to collect those, the window boxes, the way that those are shaped, they, they would stack up nicely, I believe. Visual toys, give a show projector, kind of like the Viewmaster there. There's the Fat Albert one. Do you remember these? I do remember these. You've got Speed Buggy, uh, Scooby-Doo, Bugs Bunny, Give a Show Projectors. And I'm willing to bet that unless it was something like Star Wars, for example, Kenner had the Star Wars license. I bet you that one is expensive, but the rest of the Give a Show Projectors, I bet are pretty cheap. Six Million Dollar Man one might be expensive. And here, is the cassette movie viewer where you put the cassette in you see and you wind it and you watch a little mini cartoon no sound these are often fairly inexpensive as well and you saw this insert that was in here this is not a page that fell out this is an insert that was added to the dealer catalog for TT power the long distance jumper and this is an example of what I was talking about and I could be wrong here if anyone out there is a total expert and they remember. I'm pretty sure that Kenner never produced this. I think this is one of those toys that just kind of 
Never made it past production, never made it past the prototype stage. I'm sure someone out there has got one. It's not me. <laughs> but I don't think they did TT power. Again, I could be wrong. But this is, uh, this is an insert that would have been added with the package. Daredevil jump set. Maybe they felt it was too close to the Evil Knievel set from Ideal. And so they backed off. More of the cassette movie projectors. Those kids look like they're enjoying themselves. This is back in the... Oh, yeah, that's right. It's like a drive-in projector. I remember this one. Because it was all connected and projected onto a screen. It wouldn't have worked in that type of an environment, though. You would have had to have been in a pitch-black room for it to work properly. And there's the box of cassettes. And there they got Josie and the Pussycats, Harlem Globetrotters, Scooby-Doo again, Flintstones... A lot of interesting properties there. See a show. Again, another copy of the Viewmaster, basically. See a show projectors. Those would be nice to have on the card. I think I would enjoy that. Chip away. And they still make toys like this. Basically, it's a clump, and you chip away the clump, and it reveals underneath a little figurine, in this case the Flintstones, and then you paint it yourself. So it's a, a building and sculpting set. And they have some sports figures as well, it looks like. Flintstones and sports figures, refill, Flintstone, Flintstone, okay, interesting, but yeah, they still do stuff like that. Racing cars, SSP Ultra Chrome, and these are nice, actually. It looks like it's a good size, you see the child's hands there in that one image, to give you an idea, ripcord, chromed. Nice display box there. Ultra Chrome SSP. Very cool. Very cool. I could see myself collecting these. I don't really collect cars, but you know, something like that I could get into. Mini SSP racers. I guess Kenner was really into SSP in 1974. There's the box. So these are for smaller hands, even. You see the kid. Stuffing it in his pocket there. Smash sell out again. The Smash Up Derby SSPs. More rip cords. Smash Up Derbies, you collide the cars and they blow apart. And then you put them back together, hopefully. All cars with sonic sound. Classy Crashers, so more crack-up cars. Demolition Derby with the world's most expensive cars. Oh my, I guess that's supposed to be a Rolls Royce right there. But they can't call it that. Tower and car, tower and cycle. So you the jump cycles. See, those would be cool to collect too. And then look at the boxes. Not much in the way of box art. It looks like just a photograph. Kenner did that a lot. They didn't do real artwork so much as they put a photograph of the toy or somebody with the toy. Kenner, Kenner was really well known for, for doing this sort of a thing. Kenner was also well known for doing the Kenner points where you could mail away for toys by cutting points, proofs of purchases off the back of their products. Kenner was very innovative in a lot of their marketing strategies and it was copied by a lot of other toy companies over the years. Car stunt set, very nice. Cycle action set. Deluxe thrill set. Kenner was also the first toy company to advertise 
other products on the back of the packages. So like if you turn the package over, you notice that of course most often with Star Wars, collect them all and they show you a picture of all the other action figures in the series. That was a Kenner idea. Traction action bulldozer. Oh, they actually function. So he climbs over and he's got them going up a stack of books. It's probably as high as he could get. But I bet you you could find most of this fairly inexpensive if you were into it. Now here's something really interesting. Here's a figure that a lot of people probably never saw, and that's Duke the Super Action Dog. Yes, in 1974, Kenner produced a dog action figure with a limited number of sets. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if all of these sets were produced or not. I've only ever seen two sets. But there's it's Duke the Action Dog. This is the Canyon Slide set. Um, rescue unit, another rescue unit set there. There's uh, two different size packages for the rescue unit. I'll close up on this. And this one does have actually some box art, which is just a reproduction of the big image that's up there. Duke was an attempt by Kenner to have an action figure, the star that was an animal rather than a person. And it was a one-hit wonder, and we've talked about that on this channel before. It didn't take. But try to find Duke now. You can find him loose now and again for not too much, but anything packaged Duke, forget it. Uh, Duke's headquarters complete with Duke and Duke Action Firefighter. I don't know that this one's ever been produced. I don't know if I ever saw this box. I think I've seen this, but I don't think I've ever seen this one. So I don't know if all of this was ever produced. Go ahead and close up on the box there. And you can see that it it looks like it is an actual sketch. I like how Duke has like a periscope that comes up out of the ground and I guess he operates a computer and does all this other stuff. And Duke the Action Firefighter. There's some more artwork there. Big fan of vintage cardboard as you know. And there's a look at that box. Again, I'm not sure if that was ever produced. Poster paints. Just get you let you take a look at that real quick. Dip dots and design books. Easy bright. Who remembers Easy Bright? Anyone out there remember that? That that sparks a memory for me. I remember Easy Bright. I don't think I ever had one, but I remember it. Hidden Picture. Liquid Scissors. <laughs> and this, of course, is their arts and crafts. See, it says painting and drawing toys at the top there. Close and Play Phonograph. That looks familiar also. And of course, when vinyl records were a thing, especially 45 RPM, which is the size this is, child size record players were a big thing in the 70s and the early 80s to an extent, but mostly in the 1970s. So you saw a lot of this kind of stuff. And again, this is not something that would be too terribly expensive if you were to go look for it. What else have we got here? Sing Along Jukebox. That looks really cool, actually. I would so get this if I came across one in the box. And the box art, again, it's just a photograph. This is a reproduction of the box art that you see right there. But essentially, you press one of these keys, or you, there is one key, and you press it down and you slide it back and forth, and it corresponds to a number with a picture of a character across here and it will play a tune associated with that character and there's a little songbook and you can sing along with it that's cool I like that and it has refill cylinders so you can you can change it out and play different music on on the same box 1,000 story machine. Have you ever seen one of these before? 
basically it's like a giant C and say, all right? And you see that there's like these sliding disks. So what you do is you turn the disks and line up the pictures. And when you press the button, it will, like a C and say, read across from wherever you set it up to. And it tells a different story every time because if you want to change the story, all you do is turn one of the disks to a different picture and it will read the story differently. So it literally has like a thousand different stories even though they're, um, they're rudimentary. They're really rudimentary. But there's like 12 hours of recording on this. Actually, I think it says it in here. 12 hours of different stories to amuse any child. Yeah, so the kid can switch it around. It's like the, if you ever saw those flip books that ha are cut out and you can turn it and make the, make the uh, images look different, only this sounds different. Play-Doh, classic. And again, another toy that unless it's something with a big property, a big franchise like Star Wars, most of this stuff is dirt cheap if you were to go and look for it, even sealed. But yeah, these are the shape makers and the classic Play-Doh. This is a, a classic toy. This brings back a lot of memories. I actually had a Play-Doh set, a shape, a shape set. And if I see it in this catalog, I'll point it out. Press outs with little pictures there, play set, Oddkins, kitchen play. You make little food with the molds. That's really neat. I don't know how well you can see the images there, but just for perspective, so you can get an idea of what those boxes look like. Zoo set, super zoo set, and funny frogs. It, which is actually kind of a board game. Anyone else here play with Play-Doh when they were a kid? The Fun Factory. Two different Fun Factories. Fun Factory and Fun Factory Junior, Junior and Animal Farm. Not Orwell's Animal Farm, <laughs> but a different Animal Farm. I think I think that's the set that I had, Fun Factory Junior. I'm pretty sure of it. I'm pretty sure that's the, o the only Play-Doh set I ever had. Fun Factory Junior. Pumper number nine. And look at the box art, that's cute. Pumper number nine. If I came across this mint in the box, I would totally get that. I would get this. I remember the commercial ads for Pumper Number 9. It rings a bell looking at this now. Yeah, I would totally get that. Spirograph and Spirotot, which is the junior version of Spirograph. Classic toy. You all remember Spirograph. Baby Alive, the number one doll in 1973, apparently. That's what it says there, Baby Alive Care Set. Basically, you know, you feed it this rudimentary paste and it craps itself. Isn't that fun? <laughs> and of course, you gotta keep buying the baby food. That's how they get you. That's how they get the hooks in you. Thanks a lot, Kenner. Who else have we got here? Jenny Jones and Baby John, which is a doll and her baby. And there's some clothing accessories and stuff. This is something that I guess kind of faded away rather quickly. Anybody remember Jenny Johns, Jenny Jones and Baby John? I bet you, you don't. Gabigail, she says everything I tell her to say. It says, uh, raise arm, pull string and talk to Gabigail. Lower the arm, pull the string and Gabigail will repeat what you said. And since that's pull string, I bet you that there are very few of those that still work. Dusty, Dusty, who was basically a tomboy doll. 
if you will, because you see that Dusty does all the sport things. If you knew a girl uh, when you were growing up that used to be referred to as a tomboy, that is, that she didn't do the traditional girl stuff. She liked to be physically active and engage in sports and stuff. They called that a tom girl. And that's who Dusty is, basically a doll for tom girls. Here's some more of Dusty. Award night set, sports sets. Oh, she does have a dress. There we go. It's about the only one, unless you want to count the tennis and golf as a, uh, as a dress. And it's just photographs of her on the packaging. No artwork, really. Baby Yawny. And, of course, squeeze her hand, she yawns, closes her eyes, and goes to sleep. I don't remember seeing this before. Baby Yawny. There's another insert that slid out of the back there. Nancy Nonsense. You'll never know what she's going to say. She says 216 different things. And this works kind of like that other piece that I showed you earlier with the discs. You, uh, When you pull the string, she says random words. So she rarely ever strings together a sentence. It's all random. Betty Crocker doll and bake set. Here's your Betty Crocker doll advertising and easy bake baking kits. Remember the easy bake oven? They still make that. Been making it forever. And I like how the uh, free Betty Crocker doll coupons in all sets and kits. So the uh, these sets came with Betty Crocker coupons, coupon booklets. If you ever bought one in the box, make sure that coupon booklet's in there. Ease Bake Oven for Girls 8 and Up. Warm Bake Oven for Girls 8 and Up. Of course, a boy could use it too, but this is one of those toys that you like, you bought it, and even though you, you could buy extra um, sets for it, like you see here, they didn't taste very good, and it's one of those things where like the little kid would play for play with it for um, I don't know an hour, and then lose interest, <laughs> and then you've got this big toy because these are big pieces actually. That's not an exaggeration with the little girl here, and you've got these big toys that no one ever used again. Kitty fondue. What says the seventies like a fondue kit? I don't remember this. That's cool though. That'd be that'd be cool. It says a safe new way to create a delicious candy fondue. No electricity and no batteries. How does it work? Uh, this is actually a basin. So you pull this tray out and you fill it up with uh, hot water and then put that back in and that's how it works. So you don't have to worry about unsafe electricity or batteries. You can just give your kids some boiling water to spill on themselves and hope for the best. Novelty toys, the ice bird. And you remember snow cone makers, right? This is how it was done before they had the hand crank style. And the reason that they got to the hand crank style, like you remember the Snoopy snow cone maker, and you put the ice cubes in and you push Snoopy down on the doghouse and you turn the crank on the back, it was to get people or get the kids away from this. Because basically, this is like a cheese grater on the bottom of a duck. And you take ice, and the kid just kind of goes like this. But, of course, there's a lot of opportunity for a mishap with an exposed ch cheese grater and a little four-year-old kid. So they changed the complete design. This type of thing, Ice Bird, they got away from making that. Uh, nursery toys, those are just mobiles. You probably saw those. Football game. See action football game. And then that's where this insert comes in. It fell out of the other side. It says, introducing the O.J. Simpson C action football game. Who O.J. Simpson also had a contract with Shindana during the uh, mid-70s to make action figures. And they made two action figures of O.J. Simpson. Three if you count the error. But this is the insert that goes with this page to let you know that there is an O.J. Simpson version. It's the biggest figure in all the sports world, and he was a very popular character at that time period. 
OJ will be featured on a brand new package. OJ will do the commercial. OJ will appear in printed ads. And the reason they're saying that is because they want to let the retailer know, yeah, he is going to be endorsing it. We got his contract if you want to carry this toy. And that's why this insert is, is with this portion here. And it's just, a, it's just a game. You are the quarterback. You call the plays over 288 combinations that you can project onto the screen with these little slides. Oh, hell. Sit and spin. Who remembers sit and spin? Did you ever use... I never had a sit and spin. I remember using one, but it was somewhere else. I did not have a sit and spin growing up. But that's a classic little kid toy. Steve Scout. I'm a fan of Steve Scout. I got involved with Steve Scout, with uh, collecting Steve Scout, because of G.I. Joe, because of my affinity for the 12-inch original or 1 6th scale, if you will, 1960s and 1970s G.I. Joes, because a lot of guys who would collect those types of G.I. Joes that were into building dioramas would use the Steve Scouts to go with those Joes because they are also 6th scale. The Steve Scouts are exactly the size of a teenager with G.I. Joe and the Cub Scouts are exactly the size of an adolescent with G.I. Joe and so that's how I was introduced to Steve Scout because I don't remember these being on the shelves. And here are the sets and I have these. I have all of these in the museum. I've got these and the High Adventure Scout Base, which is very difficult to find in the box. And these are just really cool toys that have kind of been forgotten over the years. And again, they, they just utilized photographs, but in the case of the Steve Scout, as you can see, they kind of built a little diorama and photographed it, which is pretty cool. Like even with the uh, High Adventure Base here, they built a diorama to photograph to demonstrate playing with the toy. So that's really cool. Again, I'm a big fan of the Steve Scout. I've got, I think, almost the entire collection. And here's some of the other sets. Thunderhead Weather Station, Lost in the High Country, Danger at Snake River, Search for the Spanish Galleon sets. And these pictures that you see here are just the photographs from the front of the boxes, which are kind of hard to see, even if you're holding the magazine yourself. Just really classic 70s. These are, these are great toys, they really are. Fully articulated, just like G.I. Joe. And then there's the Pathfinder. You see the little Jeep and the wagon and the canoe there. This is a hard set to find. These were popular. They turn up loose every once in a while, but try to find a box set. It's pretty tough. Again, this is a reproduction of the box art, which is done in diorama style. And I appreciate that. You know, they, they didn't sketch it. I do like box art, but instead of sketching it, they had somebody build a diorama. You can see somebody built an entire little set here and they gave them a backdrop to make it look like they're really out there. And then of course Avalanche on Blizzard Ridge. Here it says family packaging. These are the same packages. Point of sale materials. You know, they're doing the advertising. It's saying print advertising. You're going to see ads for this stuff in Boy's Life and Archie comic books and so on and so forth. Consumer redemption program. Uh, special Steve Scout items for savings, Adventure Stars, and there was a mail order figure that is very rare called Bill Scout that comes in a different uniform. He looks more like an, an, a, a much older teenager than Steve, and it, it came in a plain kind of white box, so there is no packaging, but that figure is very rare. Avalanche on Blizzard Ridge set is nice. I love this display. Oh man, if I could ever find this. This is the display. Let me see if I can get in there good. That Kenner sent to the toy stores. And it was on a peg like this. It was on a pole. 
and you see that the Pathfinder is in this display. It's a it's a complete diorama with the ground and everything. I would love to get that. That's amazing. It's under like a dome. Goodness, if I could ever find that. Store displays are awesome. And Magnificent 7 showing you uh, largest ever saturation nationwide TV. Basically, they're saying we're going to get on commercials and advertise the crap out of these products right here. 52 weeks all year round, opening up the flap here. And they're just giving you a final demonstration of what they intend to advertise on television, which of course will help with the in-store sales, which is the point of this catalog. And that brings us to the end of the catalog, folks. 1974 TV stars will be backed by the largest advertising campaign in Kenner history. Did you see anything in there? Did you see anything in there that you never saw before? Did you see anything in there that brought back some memories that you were like, oh my God, I would love to get that. Or I remember this. I remember seeing the ad for it. I remember seeing it in the store. Maybe you had it as a child. Let me know in the comments section down below. Would you like to see more catalog tours like this? Let me know in the comments section down below if enough people are interested. I'll certainly continue to do catalog tours. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope that you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff. Check out some of the other videos if you have not. We do a lot here for nostalgia for the adult collectors community for pop culture. Hopefully you'll see something that you find interesting. So that being said, what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.